Hello everyone, how are you doing? I'm Faker Others, really great to be here. Hope you're all well and excited about the big match coming up shortly. I uh, hope you've been enjoying all the treats as well in the virtual hospitality gift boxes. Uh, of course, courtesy of the new Chelsea FC sponsors, three this afternoon. Uh, three's focused, by the way, on bringing fans and customers closer to the team and the game they love at every opportunity. So I'm sure this is going to be the first of many activities that Three will be offering to help you stay connected. As a network, connectivity, of course, is at the heart of everything. With that in mind, and a couple of hours before kickoff, we're very excited to have you all join us for the secondary aspect to your virtual hospitality experience, which of course is an exclusive chat and Q&A session with a Chelsea legend. Let me please introduce none other than Dennis Wise. Hi, Faye. Hello, Dennis, Hello, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Excellent. And you, all right? Yeah, all very well. We've got some very excited uh, fans in here today. Massive day, of course, for Chelsea. Let's start with your thoughts on their performances this season so far and how you think they're going to fare today. Um, look, I think the season's gone OK so far. I think it's, there's some telling games coming, which could sway it either way. I think Frank will be pleased with uh, certain things that have, have worked for him this season. I'm sure they're there are other things that he'd be disappointed with. I think probably the conceding of so many goals, he's talked about that. So, but yeah, it's an exciting day today. Um, there's some exciting games ahead and um, it's going to be a tough game. I think the reason why is they beat us three times this year. Um, they seem to have the, be the bogey team against us. So hopefully today um, we can change that. You've obviously won this competition yourself. What, what are your best memories of it? Uh, obviously winning in 97, um, which was fantastic. I remember the, the, the game in, in also in 94 when we got beat. I haven't watched that. But 97 and 2000 were, were two wonderful years for us. Um, and basically, it's um, it, I think the 2000 more so, bringing, uh, being able to bring my little youngster up at the time, picking the cup up. So that was great. Mm -hmm. A lovely day that was for the family and obviously celebrating as well. Today's match is going to be obviously under slightly different circumstances. Football's all about the fans, but behind closed doors is just going to be such a, a strange experience. How do you think that's going to impact the players? Um, I think now they're used to it. Uh, I think it's weird, a weird scenario that's happened so far over um, in the football industry, going out and playing not in front of anyone. Um, I think they've got used to it now. I think they, they know what's coming, so they'll adapt to it, and they have adapted well. Uh, sometimes it can make an impact in the game when you've got fans there. It's always nice to have the fans um, and they give you that motivation at times. So that's something really strange, but uh, they'll be looking forward to it. And I I'm sure everyone is. It's an exciting game, I think. Two great teams uh, going head to head and, and uh, fingers crossed that, that Chelsea can get over the line. Absolutely. Now, listen, there are some very special guests in here today who want to ask their own questions rather than me well, taking up uh, all the time. So I'm going to introduce Adam Robinson, uh, first of all, to you, Dennis. Adam, what did you have to ask? I just wanted to ask, how did it feel to pick up the um, Cup in 97? Obviously, for us as fans, it was a long wait to uh, you know, win a major trophy. And I uh, just wondered how, as players, that felt for you guys. I look, I, I, we knew how important it was. You know, we had the 94 which uh, was so disappointing. And um, I, I walked in the dressing room and I, I sat there and I looked at the players in 97 around me and I'm thinking we have a real good chance of, of winning this, you know, um, with the quality that, that we had in there. Unfortunately, in 94, I looked around and, and thought, wow, this is going to be a difficult game today, especially you look at Man United team of that, that time. You've got Smeichel, you've got Cantona, you've got Giggs, you've got Hughes, and, and you realise that Ince and Keane in the middle of the park realising in 94 that was going to be extremely difficult. But 97, it was a relief, you know, especially Robbie's goal so early. It makes you calm. Uh, and, and I think we were very comfortable in the end, you know. I think we always felt that we was going to win the trophy at some stage and we felt very confident on that day. What's it like walking up those stairs, Dennis? Up, it's such a long way. It's a long way, but I think when the adrenaline's going, you can't wait to get up them stairs, you know, and pick the trophy up and, and lift it. Uh, it was a long, long wait for the for the club to win some silverware, and it was such a lovely 
lovely atmosphere, a lovely group of players that we had. And it was wonderful for the fans as well. They deserved it for a long, long time. So, um, yeah, it was, it was really wonderful from, from our point of view. Really enjoyed the day and celebrated it with them. And um, pleased, pleased that we'd done it, really was. I've got a question uh, from Tom Sheen from, from The Sun for you, Dennis. Um, he says, John Terry revealed you made him sell his car. What thoughts or memories have you got on uh, that? I tell you what happened. It was, um, I worked extremely hard to, to get a bonus for, for the lads um, when we got to Champions League qualifier and what happened was uh, John and, and Jody and John Arley uh, worked really hard they were part of the squad so they deserved um, to get a, a nice bonus so I made sure that they did and then he walks in with a flash car so um, I wasn't too happy and I, I, I told him in certain ways you 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 know this is not about that you need to be sensible with the money you've just got and not waste it on a car um, and he he chose to make the right decision. I, I wouldn't say I, I had him around the net. I just had my hand across his shoulder and walked him away and said, look, I'm, uh, you know, this is not correct. You know, don't do that with that. And, you know, I was only trying to help the young boys out and point them in the right direction. And, and he took it. Um, he took it well, I've got to say. And he, he, he done the correct thing. I love that. He made the right decision. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Under a bit of duress, <laughs> Not that he was gonna... forced or anything, but yeah. <laughs> I won't ask you what car it is, but very well done. Very well done. Uh, OK, Christopher Wright uh, is up next. Christopher, what have you got for Dennis? Dennis, I've got to start with saying thank you for your contribution to Chelsea Football Club. Absolute legend you are, mate. We love you. Absolute pleasure. Absolutely <laughs> loved it. Loved it. Brilliant. Well, we love you too. Um, my question, Dennis, just on the, the whole 1997 success, um, the fourth round, which we all remember against Liverpool, the comeback, the 4-2. Yes. What, what do you remember of that? And also, did you feel at that point that we were sort of on our way to winning the cup? Yeah, I think I looked at the team and um, we had a quality team. You know, I think the telling point was, was obviously the, the, the substitution that, that uh, was made. I think the formation was changed. Uh, and it had to be. Uh, it was a nightmare of a half, 2-0 down. They sh actually should have had a third and finished it. Um, when I think Steve um, McManaman went through and I think it should have been over. It wasn't. They allowed us to, to get back into it. And, yeah, you sometimes you need the luck, but you need to gamble. And I think um, we gambled. We had a real go. We never had a go in the first half, but we really had a go in the second half. And, you know, what? it worked out in our favour. And, and, you know, Sometimes you have to go through those spells and to get yourself to the next stages and you realise, yeah, you know what, this is going to be our year. Um, difficult game was always going to be. They were a very good team, Liverpool at the time. So, uh, and it went our way, you know, in, and on the day and, and some things do and some things don't. Uh, and that did. But it, I've got to say, it was a, the change of formation, the way that we played the second half, totally different. We weren't at it in the first half, but we, we definitely were in the second half. Great question, Christopher. Yes. Loving the, the new sponsored shirt as well by Twitter. Yeah. Show it off. Looks great. <laughs> I've got mine on as well. Oh, excellent. There we well, go. Really, look. <laughs> they're so smart. Uh, right, Charlie Skillen from the Daily Mail is up next for you, Dennis. Hi, Charlie, Dennis, how are you? Yeah, yeah, not bad. How are you? The haircut. What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> it's not too bad. I had one last week. <laughs> You've mentioned the, the 94 and the 97 Cup final, but in just three short years, Chelsea as a club was unrecognisable. You you and a couple of others like Frank Sinclair, you are kind of the constants. And I just wondered what it was like to be part of that change going from, you know, a, a club that was 14th in the league at the time to signing Zola and Di Matteo and Rude joining. And I just wondered what it was like to be part of that transition, with a transformation in a club in such a short space of time. Yeah, you, you kind of there's levels, isn't there? You know, and and there was some that was able to to kind of stay at the level, and there's some that wasn't, and they filtered away. And I think, as you see, there's quite a few of them that end up filtering away. We needed to go to another level. Um, I think what Ken Bates done regarding bringing in Glenn Hoddle was great, uh, and then being able to bring in Glenn, he then allowed us to bring in the likes of Rude Hullet and Hughes, and then they kept flowing um, and. You look around the dressing room and you look at the experience, you look at the quality 
gradually keep, keeps coming in every year and you think now we can compete and I think that was what it is about and then it was really up to us as well uh, as players to adapt to that and to bring ourselves to the level that these quality players that were coming in and as you said that you know a lot of them did disappear and the level from 94 the difference you know we had Peacock and we had I think Johnny Spencer, Craig Burley, um, the likes of Scott Minto and all of a sudden, it all started to change because of the quality and they started to disappear, them players. Uh, why? Because they wasn't then to the level that was actually coming in at the time. And so, therefore, it, it was transitional period and it was great for us. And it was great that we, I was able to, to play with so many wonderful, talented players. Actually, uh, Mark Worrell's uh, got a question that's quite similar about the, the Glenn Hoddle era, um, Dennis, that you might be able to expand a little bit more, Mark. Yeah, so Charlie stole my thunder a bit. So I'm just going to quickly echo Chris's sentiments there and uh, just say thanks a lot, Dennis, for everything you did for the club. Uh, it was a phenomenal time, certainly for some of his older supporters who had gone through a lot of pain, um, not having been old enough to really enjoy the, the Kings of the Kings Road side of the early 70s. So that was brilliant. So, yeah, I, what I was keen to understand, Dennis, I mean, obviously you were at the club when Glenn Hoddle was appointed manager. Did, did you have any inkling at all um, that you were kind of going to be a part of something extraordinary? Or was it just... I, I, so I, I think when, when Rude came in and um, Mark Hughes, I think that was the telling part. Mark, I love the top, by the way. <laughs> Love the top. Uh, that was the telling part, I think. You know, I think we was um, when the, they came in, you knew that all of a sudden we started to get a little bit serious in in the personnel who we were signing. And I think that was uh, that was a point where we thought to ourselves. I thought to myself, well, uh, we might have an opportunity here. And um, where we was always seemed to be a, a team that was always going to be fighting to to stay in the league. Now, all of a sudden, we always knew we was going to be a team that was going to be able to compete in certain elements, which obviously was the Cups. Uh, and that's what we done at the time. And then we started to get build even bigger and start to compete up the, up the top. And I think that's something that um, takes a bit of time. It did. I think bringing the likes of Glenn in, bringing the likes of Rude and bringing Viali, Zola, um, Hughes, I think changed so much to Matteo and it was great to have these quality players in. So, yeah, I did know then, I did know things were going to change um, just by the um, the personnel that started to come in. You get get a feeling, wow, well, um, things are going to happen here. They're happening at the moment as well. Ben Pringle from The Express has got uh, a question. Mark, thank you for yours. Ben, are you there? My question to you is... Uh, Chelsea at the moment have um, a wealth of talent in central midfield. Um, you've got Kante, Kovacic, Jorginho, Gilmore, Mount, Barkley, Loftus-Cheek. Um, I wanted to get your opinion on what you think the best combination of those players is currently and then going forward. I, I would say the, the main person is Kante, I, I think for sure. Um, I think you can have a mixture of Kovacic, Barkley, uh, Mount. Um, I think... It would be out of them, kind of four would be my three that sit in there. Uh, I think uh, Mason Mount's done extremely well. I think Barkley's gone through a spell of really doing well. Kovacic. So it's, it's difficult to, to give you the three. But one, one of them for sure is Kanti. I think he's so important to, to the team to sit in there. Um, if I had to pick out of them, I know you've got Loftus-Cheek, you've got young Gilmore. Um, so they're quality players. But Loftus Cheek obviously has been out for a while. It'd be unfair to all of a sudden try to push him in that category. Um, and the young boy Billy Gilmore, just because he's so young and developing, and I think you've got to give him time. Um, so that's where I would be really. I think it'd be out of um, definitely Canty, and then the three, uh, two out of the, the three that I mentioned: Kovacek, Barkley, and Mount. It's a good problem to have, I would say. <laughs> Great problem. I've got to <laughs> say. I, I think, Mason Mount's done extremely well in spells and so has Barkley and so has Kovacek. It's very difficult to break them up. I've got a question uh, from Vince who joins us all the way from Nigeria. Uh, he wants to know, Dennis, is it more beneficial to Chelsea to rest key players against Manchester United today to keep them fresh for the league game against Liverpool three days later? No, 
Uh, I think it's important for us to win. Uh, simple as that today. Uh, we'll deal with the matter in midweek, however needs to be dealt with. Um, so, and I'm sure the squad is good enough and big enough to, to be able to deal with both of the games. I think they've shown that recently of um, the mixture, different mixture, and they play game after game after game non-stop. So I wouldn't either. Nizar Kinsella has quite a similar uh, question. He's from Goal. Nizar? Hi, you're right, uh, Dennis. It's great to hey, speak Nizar. about Chelsea. My question is really, is, is today's game going to impact the race for the top four? Because um, I guess, you know, you can knock the confidence of the team you're competing with in a cup competition. No, I don't think it will. Um, I think it's, a, it's obviously a one-off game today um, that um, there'll be an end result. Simple as that. And I think there's a different focus. They know what they've got to do in the league. Um, and I, I'm sure they, it's game by game and that's how they'll deal with it. It's not that this one's important and then it's going to knock you for the next one. They're in a really good position in the league. Um, they've got obviously Liverpool and Wolves coming up in the, in the league. So they're two tough games. But I think they'll they deal with them. Uh, I don't think it'll be confidence. It'll have nothing to do with confidence. I think the team is is full of confidence. Um, and on their day, I think they're capable of beating anyone. So, no, I don't think it will make any impact. I've got one time for one quick question, Dennis, from Joe Krishnan at the Evening Standard. If he can keep it really quick, then we can just about squeeze this in. Joe? Hi there, guys. Um, yeah, just a quick question. I'll keep it really quick. Um, about the youngsters coming through at Chelsea. Um, you know, Fikayo Tomori, uh, Billy Gilmore, uh, Rhys James. Uh, what do you think about the, the emerging crop of Chelsea and are they good enough to keep out, uh, you know, the top stars going forward? Um, I think they've shown that at the moment in spells, in patches, they are good enough. I think then you want more consistency off of them. Um, to make a bigger impact. I think they're going to have some, some fighting on their hands going forward. But this is what it's about, competition and fighting for your place. So I think they've shown that their quality um, within this season coming in. I think Reece James has done exceptionally well. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at some stage he, he will get an England situation where he'll, he'll play for sure. I think he's, he's done extremely well. Um, I think Mason Mount as well. Tammy, Tammy's shown that he scored goals, but he needs to be a little bit more consistent. And I think that's what it is really, being more consistent as youngsters. Um, because they're going to have to be, because they've got some, some, some top players coming in to Chelsea. So therefore, you're going to have to step it up. You know, they really have to. But I think they've coped extremely well and I think they've done well. It's going to be really exciting times ahead, isn't it? Look, we're running out of time, so I'm going to ask Ovi's uh, question. I know, Dennis, you surprised Ovi with his hospitality box turning up on his doorstep <laughs> this morning, which I'm sure he loved. I've seen his little boy climbing all over him. Um, so I'm just going to ask Ovi's question really quickly, if you can keep it short. How does it feel captaining a big club like Chelsea for so long? I, it's a wonderful feeling. I've got to say, I really enjoyed it. I had some wonderful moments and um, it was passed on to, to another um, person who I knew from a young, young boy. And it couldn't have been a better match for him to take it on to the next levels. But I tell you what, it's a great experience. It's a wonderful feeling as well. I really enjoyed it. Listen, I've really enjoyed, and I'm sure all of our guests have as well, speaking to you today uh, in Three's virtual hospitality box. So thank you so much, Dennis, for joining us. Thank you to all of you guys as well for your fantastic questions. It's not long till kickoff. Keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, enjoy the game. Enjoy the pre-match build-up as well. Thanks to Three for hosting us as well in their hospitality box. Virtually, uh, nice and different. Cheers, and enjoy the game. Take care. Cheers. Thanks all.